Welcome back. The late one tonight, or is it? <laughs> Depending on what perspective you look at things from. Yeah. We went for a late night walk, and so we had a really good day. We had a not great sleep last night, but um, we we woke up and had our massages, and then we had lunch late. And it seemed to be that when we ate the lunch, it just kind of set our bodies off. I don't know whether it was the, the massage giving us a release, hey guys, whether it was a massage giving us a release or whether it was the food that we ate, so I'm never quite know. Anyway, anyway, we decided to go for a late night talk, uh, walk, but it um, enabled us to have some cool like, how good, how good is um, an after dinner walk? Hey, Kimmy, hey guys. How good is it after dinner walk? Like literally just allowing yourself some time to walk and digest and defrag from the day. Yeah, a bit of a download. A bit of a download. So it was um, super interesting. Hey Cheryl, I was wondering who was on there. Cheryl and Kimmy, give you guys a wave. Um, oh shit. <laughs> uh, so today's topic was chosen for us and I think it's really um, perfect timing. Like. This isn't necessarily about the masks that are being asked to be worn. This is more about the facade. The persona. The persona. The masks we wear to disguise our vulnerable truth. And actually, really ironic that we had a shower before we jumped on here, so I'm literally wearing no makeup. Um, which is a mask that I have it chosen is. to wear for so many years and it does feel super uncomfortable but at the same time I think over the years of personal development I've learned to show myself in the truth that I am and the rawness that I am and and I well you guys probably saw me a couple of nights ago I was wearing a face mask so I had red blotchy skin which is pretty vulnerable for a woman of this day and age mm -hmm. they're not in touch with themselves to share that part of themselves so vulnerably. So the masks we wear, like makeup, like uh, attitude, like aggressiveness, like uh, what else can we come up with? Like there's, there's this whole abrasiveness. Yeah, there's there's it's not even that. A lot of people are nice on the outside and assholes on the inside. They put this fake persona or this mask on because they want people to like them. Uh, they want people to see that they're doing good. They want people to see that they're successful. Or you're seeing a lot of this on social media. Social media is probably the biggest mask that you're going to see. You're seeing snippets of someone's life that they want you to see. Masks. Uh, yeah. Snippets of someone's life that they want you to see. So when someone puts on a mask or a persona, it's essentially what they want you to see. Mm. Um, interesting how the masks are covering people's faces these days because that's what the government wants to see. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but that's not what we're talking about. Um, but the, the interesting thing is the social medias, the personas, the attitudes, good, bad or indifferent. This is something that essentially you want to be perceived as. Mm. Um, I feel like this... It's a coping mechanism for yeah. people. A disguise, a coping mechanism, and the reason it's coping or what it's hiding is the truth mm. in most cases. Um, you see a lot of these people that, that have these great social that the social networks and they're showing all of the things and then sometimes you hear them and say, oh, how's, how's things? And they say things like, I'm living the dream. Um, most people that say that are not living the dream, first right. of all. But the whole point of what they're doing is they're showing this because the truth is uncomfortable. The truth is generally uncomfortable in most states. And unfortunately, most people have a shitty existence and a shitty life. I feel like if you start showing that all the time, you don't really, you definitely don't have a following um, on socials. And if you're... Oh, I kind of beg the differ. I feel like society is having this warped, twisted perspective these days. And they're wanting to see, like, remember my sister bringing up about this mum in Adelaide who is a pisshead and has a, she's got money, but she's just a rough nut. And she's just, she's killing it on social media because she's real, she's down to earth, she's not fake, she swears, she says at times she freaking gets shit off with her kids and blah, blah, blah. Like, so she's really real. So, But she's being real. That's not the mask. Wow. Though, is it? Then it becomes Possibly. a mask. Possibly. It may start out as a, I'm being real, but eventually people then have to live out this persona 
quote wrong. And I then beg the question, masks are temporary. Yeah. Because yeah. you will always outlive... You will always come back to truth, or you will outlive that that mask and that persona, and you will then shift into a new awareness, a new persona, a new requirement for your existence, mm -hmm. so that you feel comfortable. There's the trigger word, so that you feel comfortable with who you are and how you're showing up in the world. Yes. Um, yes. I yes, know yes. That myself as a NLM for so many years. I fuck. I did. She was. I did like Arbon. I did Thrive. I did. I can't remember how many I did, but they were always. Fake it until you make it. That was their thing. It was like, if you're not doing it, who cares? Just get up there and tell a story of someone else or tell a story about something that you did. And, you know, it's not going to matter if you inflate it a little bit. And they'll mask, right? So yeah. I have massive social media and I have all this shit. To be honest, my Instagram's at 10,000 followers because someone showed me a trick on how to get 10,000 followers. A lot of it was authentic, but, and I did do the work, I did show up daily, and I did, did do the post, and I did follow the ball, the dash, but I got there and realised I'd outlived the mask because it was so uncomfortable to be in that space anymore. I realised that I actually preferred my mask, and I decided to remove that one and come off social media for a while. And it's an interesting perspective, because essentially, when you live authentically in yourself, the right people come into your life, the right things start happening and it starts to move from a place that serves you. Mm. When you're not being yourself, and it doesn't matter whether it's good, bad or indifferent, if you're not being authentically you and there's so many things that we can do to come back to that, first of all, it starts with presence and balance. Mm. As we've said every other day, coming back to who you are is mm. going to be what serves you best. Then you don't need to wear that mask. People are wearing masks because they're uncomfortable in a lot of cases with, first of all, maybe it's who they are, maybe they have insecurities, maybe they feel like society has given the perspective that we need to be here. Wherever we are, the society, our school, our parents have said, you need to do this, this, and this, and this, otherwise you're a nothing. The other mask was always put on a brave face. Do you remember hearing that? Yeah. From your yeah. parents? Put on a brave face and keep going. We're conditioned from when we're young. And if we think back to the olden days when we used to wear, they used to go to the masquerade balls and they would do this because hiding their features would be a way of being alluring, of being mysterious, of being um, certain things unseen. So it started from so long ago that it was an attractive way to be mm -hmm. was to put on a mask and be seen and portrayed in a certain light or a certain aspect. And there was, I was reading something recently with masks in general, and it's, this is a very interesting one. Masks are a form of control as well. Mm -hmm. So when you wear a mask, masks are actually a form of torture and have been for hundreds and hundreds of years. The, the covering of the face mask helps, and it actually changes people and makes them lose their identity and makes people more compliant. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of the things, the things we're moving into in this crazy 21st century world, people are becoming more compliant. They're becoming easy to be led they're being manipulated because they're constantly wearing a mask we're taught to wear a mask now we're actually being kind of some of us are being forced to physically wear masks and it's making people lose their identity and hard to find who they actually are so the hard thing about we this, lose our essence we lose the essence we become we lose, easier to manipulate we become easier to control yeah. We lose our own ability to think and process for ourselves. And it was funny, Danny just made a comment about some of us wear an entire bodysuit. It's funny how, like I said before, we outgrow certain masks and personas. And if we don't outgrow them, the body then adapts them. And these personas, these protective modes, these body masks or body suits become carcinogenic and cancerous. Mm -hmm. And this is what we see in the world a lot with illness and disease, it is people who have worn a mask for too long that has caused calcification or deterioration of our so world, conditioning. of our body. So, and the same thing, um, interestingly enough, um, we're talking about masculine and feminine tonight, and um, I can say this because I will always talk about these sorts of stories, um, it's interesting to see women who have spent far too long wearing a masculine mask, right? They have to fight. They, they've taken on this belief that to survive, they must be strong and independent and masculine on their own. And what will happen is they end up bitter. They end up with things like arthritis. Uh, they end up with things like skin conditions from the 
from the covered rage that they actually bear because they've been told that bearing their emotions and bearing their vulnerabilities is unsafe. So then they go out their whole life masking up, not bearing their truth, not allowing themselves to feel, suppressing everything, and eventually their body completely breaks down and they become bitter. Mm. And uh, I love my mum, but she is the perfect uh, uh, example. example of this. Is She's riddled with rheumatoid arthritis. She was riddled with all the other arthritises. Her body and mind are as rigid as each other and she is stuck within the own, her own prison that which she created. And her rigid mind and rigid body, the mask, no longer can actually figure out any way of understanding what could possibly exist outside of that existence because it's too painful to think of the possibilities outside of that. So the masks we wear, we wear initially as a protective mechanism which will eventually kill us. It's very interesting because that whole lot comes back to a model. And I say that, sorry, and I say that with utter love. Like, I love my mother, but it's hard as a child to sit there and watch your own family kill themselves mm. because of the masks, the facades, and the personas that our parents, sadly, felt they needed for far too long. And no one's necessarily always there to remind people to drop the mask, drop the facade, no. drop the bullshit, and be vulnerable and feel your feelings and be the you and be okay with the fact that sometimes you just don't have it together. Sometimes mm -hmm. you fuck shit up. Sometimes life is hard and you just have to well, look within. There's a balance in exactly that, look within. But the thing here is people wear a mask because it's comfortable. It's mm. more comfortable than standing in your truth. Mm. It's more comfortable to wear a mask and comply than stand and say, I am not okay with this. Mm. I, I'm for myself, I can't not. I, it hurts me to tears to stop and go, I will just comply because it's easier. Mm. It is more comfortable, yes it is, and I'm seeing it a lot. At the moment, this is so much happening. I, I will not wear the mask on the street. And it is, it's, it's uncomfortable, the conversation, because people look at me like I'm a leper. Mm -hmm. Now, I have my reasons for not wearing one, and, and one of them is as simple as I don't buy into conspiracy theories like that. And uh, first of all, I'm a, I'm a sovereign being, and I, and I have my own reasons. There is other reasons as well. But my point with this is it's uncomfortable in both states. It's actually easier to wear the mask. It's actually easier to cut, whether it be the physical mask, your persona, whatever it actually is, it's actually easier to do that mm -hmm. than to sit in your truth than to yeah. stand in your truth or sit in your truth and be you and sit with your emotions. If you can be the person that's happy-go-lucky all the time, you don't actually have to stop and sit with your bullshit and actually feel the feelings. Interesting you say that. It's more comfortable to wear them. Think about this just right now in context. This wasn't meant to be about this, but that's such a beautiful metaphor. Right now, it is more comfortable to sit with the mask than to be bare and exposed and fully seen in society. This is exactly us, yeah. The treatment that we've had today, because we can't wear masks, um, the treatment we've received today is that of judgment, is that of the leper, mm. of being seen uncomfortably in your bareness, which is not wearing a mask. Very interesting metaphor for that. Yeah, I think it's exactly the point. When... Nothing ever good came out of a comfort zone. The unfortunate thing is we're taught to live inside the comfort zone. I was saying this to Tim yesterday. What did you, what was the first thing when uh, your parents asked you what you did, what wanted to do when you grow up? Most of us would have said things as a six year old kid, like I want to play, I want to be, you know, what do you, what do you want to be? Oh, I, I want to be a surfer or I want to do whatever it happens to be. You had this great big dream and society said, fuck you, you need to do something realistic that you're going to make money from. And you went, all right, well, I want to be a rock star. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be this and that. And then society and your school teachers have said, let's be realistic. Let's be realistic. Let's think, let's think something like you could work in a shoe factory. <laughs> you know, they've given you these things that no, no, no fit in the box. It is not fucking comfortable in that. It's comfortable in the box short term because you're not stepping outside and standing for who you are. Find who you are. We said this last night. Mm. Find who you are and be that. Ooh. It might not be comfortable at first. It might not be. And it might, but 
when you fight for you, it's liberating. It really is. We had an interesting conversation about this the other day. Uh, was interesting. So medication can be mm. a mask as well. Yes. Medication can be a massive mask. And we speak about things like anxiety, depression, and ADHD. And it's very interesting that um, people would prefer... So this is where masks and conditioning really come in. How dare you be you and be so different and outside the box mm -hmm. that you might be considered to be something like ADHD or um, depressed or anxious. So let's put a mask of... <laughs> you feel attacked. Let's wear a mask of medication to normalize you rather than what if society was to, to maybe take up your energy and your ability to be your great self and maybe you are an outgoing rebellious rambunctious high energy um uh what's the word um uh very just, oh, i can't even think of the word now maybe you are someone that shifts and changes a lot into different um things constantly but society would dictate that that is not good and that is not enough or that is bad. So it's let's not, put a mask of normal. medication to normalize you, to bring you back into that box. Let's bring a mask of medication so yeah. that you are perceived as normal. These things are all masks. What if we could be uncomfortable enough to allow people to fully exist in who they, as who they are? Like, wouldn't that world be interesting? It I, might be I, a bit chaotic as we all adjust, but wouldn't it be interesting to see the humans playing out their greatness and all of their are, uh, all of their glory, all of their malfunctioning or dysfunction, dysfunctional behaviour. What if we were to allow people to exist in that? People would say that we've evolved, but it's, have we? There's a paradigm shift starting, and unfortunately it's not happening fast enough, but there's a paradigm shift. Things are changing, things are moving. I feel people are starting to wake up we're not awake yet. We're still, we're, people, I, I hear this all the time, this, this generation's woke. This generation's woke as far. This generation is on the spectrum. It's, this, <laughs> Boy, this, it legitimately is. It's, it's, the masks that we've had to wear for so long have put us on the spectrum. This, it, it's, it's hurtful. It's, we are waking up. We are starting to realise. But the biggest thing we need to do is question everything. Mm. Everything. Mm -hmm. And I've said this for a long, long time. And it's not just about the mask. It's about everything. I don't care whether you think one way or, or the other. First of all, don't believe either way because there's enough proof Question there that you don't ways. need to. But if you blindly accept it, I feel like you need to punch in the head. You need to question everything and use the intellect that you were given. And otherwise, you're taking up space and breath that you do not deserve. If you just simply say, okay, okay, yes, I'll walk into the gas chamber, okay, whatever it happens to be, you're not using your God-given right and your sovereignty that you own. You own you. You own this space. Start thinking clearly. Think outside the box. Stop going, oh, you know what? The government would never do anything wrong by us because I've got some bad news for you. There's only like ever since government was made that they've never had your best interest at in heart. Never, ever, ever. But this isn't, this isn't just about that, but this is about the think outside the box. Use your brain. Come back to you. Mm -hmm. Come back to what really matters. All the rest of the things out there are just details. The majority of it's detail. But you need to use your conscious mind. Find who you are. Be that. Be uncomfortable. And Danny just said in the comments before, people don't like being uncomfortable or can't hate being uncomfortable. Start pushing past that edge of uncomfortable. When you feel that, you feel that in there, push past it. Sometimes, sometimes you should not push past it, but there's this point there where it goes, that's uncomfortable, push past it, and I can tell you what, it will be liberating. Mm -hmm. It will be so liberating to actually go, you know what, I have the power. I, the I in me, has the power mm -hmm. to be able to move forward and grow from this. Mm -hmm. Because that's where growth starts. Growth starts outside of the comfort zone. That's the truth. That's I think when we realize, um, and the thing is we can lie to ourselves and say that we don't realize, but you do. You do, you feel the pain, you feel the anxiousness, you feel the disconnect or the discord. 
Um, and I think it's remembering. I know life's a spectrum. Danny's a spectrum. Life is a spectrum. <laughs> Danny's a spectrum. Um, <laughs> and so it's also remembering that I lost my train of thought. <laughs> remembering that we need to come back. And again, there's a balance in all of this, but to come back to who you are, drop the mask, and the people that are in your life that, that leave, good, let them go. Mm -hmm. Don't fight for people. Don't, don't cross rivers for people that wouldn't cross puddles for you. If people can't see that you're struggling or that you're doing well and that you need the help or you don't need the help, that's not good communica communication. You need people in your communication. You need people in your life that communicate well with you. And communication, as a wise young man once said, is about the things that aren't said. Mm. If you, you don't need to know that if I haven't contacted you in a week or two weeks, maybe I've just got shit going on. I'm not avoiding you. The, I will tell you if there's a problem. So this is what happens so much. We don't read the things that aren't said. We need to come back to the essence, mm. understand these things, and grow from there. Mm, yes, so much. Um, I still can't remember what that point was before, but it was really great. And I'll probably pop in the comments at some stage. Fudge. I think you're retired. You're I am tired. Tired. I'm tired. But I think, yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's remembering that the, the masks that we find, and even when we start to feel them, and we know that we are wearing them, it's remembering that the mask that we wear is only a momentary band-aid for the problem. So leaning into the mask and asking ourselves, why have I allowed this mask to be here? Why have I lived with this mask for so long? How is it serving me? Because you're ultimately living with that mark because it does serve you for some reason. Mm. And get real with yourself. Question that and go, why has it been serving me? A mask may be an illness. You may be ill, sick, incapacitated. And that may be the story, the mask, which you have lived for quite some time because it serves you in some capacity. And that might be that you actually get attention. Mm -hmm. That might be you actually get compassion or love or connection from people. Or pity. Or pity and yeah. this is very well known in the medical industry and very well known in the psychology industry and um, to be to have people wearing a mask of illness because it actually serves them to be sick yeah. you're depressed you're sad you're, you're cancer or you're whatever it actually happens to be is that really living and could you find another way could yeah. you remove that mask and actually bear the vulnerable truth that you are in pain that you are scared that you are lonely Mm. Could you bear that truth and really transmit it, transmute it, and utilize it in a more useful way and be a better human? Because then you start to contribute. The rest of the time, you're just kidding and you're actually wasting this one opportunity that you have in this lifetime to be yes. this version of you. So there's there's two points that I want to make. First of all, and it's just going to come back to no. I've said it again. No, can't make it? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice view. <laughs> um, no, I have lost my train of thought. No, the first Jesus. <laughs> uh, thinking, don't do me thinking, thinking, thinking. Two points. Two points. If you yeah. want to make that wearing mask and being ill. Someone help me out here. Mm. Mm. It's not good. You made me. You made me lose it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Are we um, done? Uh, yeah, probably. Um, Finding yourself being that, coming back to you, coming back to you. What I was going to now we've got back there, right? What I was going to say is quite often the key to changing or making the first step in growth is awareness. Now I know we all do this. We all do this. You can turn up to a party um, of a group of friends that you might not necessarily feel comfortable with, or you can turn up to a rich party, a set race, or something, and you put on a persona. To match that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with doing this temporarily. No. no, that is good. But pick up on it. Be aware of it. Your voice changes. Your energy changes. You turn up to whatever else. You go, oh, how are we doing? You get into this, you know, white girl wasted phase that we all do. We get into this spot. And that's absolutely okay to, to notice it. Or to even do it. But to notice that now you've changed personas for that. And just think about whether it does serve you or not. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does serve you to actually get up and go, I need to do this for this business to make this happen. But notice how it makes you feel. Notice whether you're being true to yourself. How does your energy feel? Is it sapping your energy or is it serving your soul? Yeah. 
and, and that's the whole thing. And, and the other, the second point I've even found in that crazy little mind of mine, just pulled it from back there, was we are on this planet to live. That's what we're here for. We're here to live and to grow. So what's the best ways to do that? Ask yourself that question. What is the best way to live fully, presently, and balanced? Because that's what living is. Living well is living presently, fully, and balanced. Because that encompasses the health. That encompasses the fitness. That encompasses the family. All of those things. To live present, full, well, you need to be you. Mm. You need to authentically be you. Stop lying to yourself. No one gives a shit if you lie to them, but you give a shit if you lie to yourself. You're denying everyone your greatness. And and that's I've said this a lot. You know what? Not everyone loves me, but I love me. Mm. Oh, the last one. Another mask is your body, your muscles. And I've said this for a long time. This is what I stand for as an endomorphic body myself. Is um, Some of us will put on weight when we feel unsafe. Of course. To protect ourselves. And this may be in the form of what we dump fat, or it may even be in the form of muscle for those who go to the gym and train and get big and strong. FYI, they are both masks and mm -hmm. they are both forms of protection. And if you would be so bold well, as to just face yourself in that and allow yourself to have compassion and to know that you're ultimately seeking safety. And remember that that safety can only come from within you, which does not need to contain excess layers of muscle yeah. or fat. Well, the interesting point with all of this, <laughs> you want to live a great life, come back to your essence. Mm. You want to, it doesn't matter what it is. You want to have a balanced life, come back to your essence. Come back to your truth, come back to the present. Now, essence is what happens when you boil something down to its absolute best ingredients. When you simmer it down and you get rid of all the bullshit, you get rid of all the steam, you get rid of all the stuff that's not you. Mm. What have you got? We talked about this again last night. You can live without your legs. You can live without your arms. You can live without your hair. You can live without your mask. You can live without most of your body. And essentially, with the way science is now, you could be a brain in a jar and you could still be you. Mm. Now, your brain's just matter. So your essence is that spirit energy that is inside you. It's that deep awareness that is becoming conscious of itself. You know you think. You know it. You can see your thoughts. You know you think. And what does that tell me? You're more than your mind. Yes. You're this essence that's actually outside your body. The scientific proof that shows you're an essence outside your body. Right? Mm. You don't need that mask. But when you come back to your essence... And you know that you are more than all that bullshit. You're more than your mask. You're more than your body. You're more than your persona. Mm. We can live presently, fully, in this moment. Ooh, I just came to me about um, last night's awareness and conversation. Where's the remembering that we all have shadows? <laughs> Very creepy. I know. And um, <laughs> without... Light, you can't have dark. Without dark, you can't have light. They're both the yin and the yang. And sometimes we actually need to turn to our shadows and see its beauty, see its depth, see its tones, its different shadows, its different shades. And remember that there is beauty in our darkness as much as there is beauty in our light. And mm -hmm. there is relevance to both. Both matter. So don't crucify or castrate or shun either part of yourself. Mm -hmm. They're both relevant. They're both beautiful. They're both fucking perfect and they're both yours before we sign off on that bit we were talking about this the other day because again it comes back to this balance yes you need the dark to be able to see the light you need these things and there is a healthy amount of all of the feelings because at the end of the day you don't want to you you want to not be angry you don't want to be hate you don't want to be all those things but to experience those emotions is what you're here to do, is to experience being human. And sometimes using that anger to fuel you, to, to act when you need to act, rather than getting punched in the face because you don't have the anger inside you mm. that you can have access to. If you let all of that shit go, you're no longer human. Mm. Last thing, I mean, Danny just said, live without your hair. In fact, yes, 
some of the reports we've seen from women who have done the shave for a cure or had cancer was some of the most liberating and vulnerable moments was taking the hair off. Yeah, no and it can be incredibly awakening and, and um, enlightening to realise that we live with a persona that is our hair as well. Fuck me, you guys see me. Um, and the same with Snapchat, you know. I know a shite load of my photos have got filters on them. Again, the name, like, oh, again a mask. You look so pretty. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> Troy would love it. Troy loves, Troy loves the ones I put on you. So yeah, remembering these are all masks. They're all personas. They're all... They're all things that we, we hide behind. Yeah, and I think the important thing to realise <laughs> simply is that you're actually more than that. Mm. That's, that's the biggest part. Remember that you are more than all of that. They, they can serve you in some ways, but when you become aware of it and you notice you're wearing a mask, just ask yourself, is it serving me? Is it something that is helpful mm. for my life? If it's helpful, do it. If it's not helpful, don't. If it makes you feel good, do it. If it doesn't, don't. If you feel liberated by changing it and dropping it. Be careful to feel good. Is it a healthy good? Yeah. Is it balanced good? And Danny said it's your biggest mask is your hair. Yeah, I feel you on that. I I spent my whole, and it's probably cool to last finalised part, but um, I was, you know, as a kid, curly hair, and Danny would have felt the same thing. Everyone's like, what the heck is up with your hair? And I, everyone thought it was great, but I thought it was hideous. So I would torture myself and straighten it and chemical it and just ruin my hair as a kid. And it's only been three, four years ago. I'm 33 now, so it took me until I was 30 to finally actually just surrender to the fact that this is my hair and love that. And look at the mask and why I didn't like it because I was scared to stand out. I'm over six foot. It kind of happens without my choice. So remembering that we can embrace those things. Now I do. Now I fully embrace it with a bright, colourful mask that I needed to do tonight. I realised that when we were sitting here. Anyway, guys, so I think that's enough for tonight. Well, yeah, I think so. I think we're a bit tired, but I think it's an interesting concept. And yeah, as I said, my, my whole biggest point, everything comes back to presence. But the biggest part about that, and we brought it up tonight, is Come back to your essence and question whether these things serve you. When you start to notice it... And don't then, bullshit yourself. You know what's not serving you. Don't lie to yourself. You can lie to me. You can lie to anyone. You can, And that's fine. Like, like, no one cares if you lie to, to them realistically because the only person you're hurting is you. So stop hurting you. Mm. You know, other people are going to do enough for that. So just yeah. stop hurting you. Just stop hurting you. Love you guys. Peace and love. And Kimmy, I bet you recognize the shirt. All right, guys, bye.